Did you know that it's entirely possible for your saltwater aquarium's parameters to be in range but completely out of balance with one another? And if so, this could cause problems with your coral growth and your coloration. So if you're having those issues, maybe this video will help you figure out what's going on. Let's talk about it. The first thing that we're going to be talking about is nitrates and phosphates and correlating this to baking a cake. Now, when you're baking a cake, all of the ingredients in that cake are very important. Just like coral growth and coral coloration, the ingredients in the water are very important. It's often been said when keeping reef tanks that if you keep good water, then your corals will be fine. And that's pretty much true. And just like baking a cake, if you have the correct ingredients in the correct proportions, and that part is the key, then you're going to see good growth and good coloration from your corals. If we think of nitrates in a reef tank like the flour of baking a cake and phosphates like the sugar of baking a cake, there's a lot more flour than there is sugar. Either one of those things being in the wrong proportions in your recipe are either going to make for a cake that doesn't taste very good or you're not even going to have a cake at all. And the same way in your reef tank, if they're in the correct proportions, you're going to have good growth and good coloration. Now there's something that comes into play here that scientists have researched in the oceans called the Redfield Ratio. The Redfield Ratio was derived from some research science that was done into phytoplankton in a reef setting in the ocean. And what they ultimately figured out was a ratio of 16 parts nitrogen to 1 parts phosphorus was pretty much optimal for this phytoplankton to grow and proliferate in the best case scenario. But that doesn't actually translate to reef tanks all that well. That ratio is a little bit off. So what we have figured out over the years through trial and error and through some actual science with coral farms and things like that, to be the adequate ratio of nitrogen to phosphorus in our tanks is 100 to 1. We really want to run our phosphates at around 100 times less than our nitrates. But there is the range that I was talking about earlier. What people generally say is a good range of nitrates for a reef tank is anywhere from about 2 to about 20 parts per million. So this is where that thing comes in with being in range and out of balance. A good range for phosphates in a reef tank is anywhere from 0.01 up to about 0.2 depending on where your nitrates are. So let me give you an example. Let's just say you have a reef tank and your nitrates are at one part per million. Now this is enough for coral growth in a tank like mine where it's not packed full of corals yet. There's a few in there, they're doing a good job, they're growing and they're steady. But let's just say that I've got some die off from these rocks that I put in the tank. Maybe I didn't clean them properly enough before I put them in and my phosphates are at 0.25. Now this is really close to being in range on the phosphates, but the phosphates are way higher than that 100 times less number than we would be looking at for the nitrates. So if my tank is running at one part per million nitrates, and you divide that by 100, I should be shooting for about 0.01 phosphates. Now people love to say, don't chase numbers. And I absolutely agree. But that comes with the caveat that your tank must be in balance. What they mean is if your nitrates are at one, don't try to make them five without a reason. Or if your nitrates are at five, don't try to make them two without a reason. But you do need to try to achieve this balance in your aquarium of the 100 to one ratio. Now it doesn't have to be exact as long as you're close and the tank looks good, then you're good to go. But just like baking a cake, if the proportions are incorrect, you're not going to have a good time. And the reason that we have come to this 100 to 1 ratio is despite what people like to say, this is not the ocean. It is a simulated environment that is ocean-like in nature. Now in the ocean, there is a ton of natural filtration. And that natural filtration is going to use up all of those nutrients for its growth and to just keep things on an even keel. But in our reef tanks, we are in a more controlled environment than that. We do have some natural filtration in our rocks and in our sand bed, and some of us run refugiums and things like that. 
but we are not nearly as successful as using these nutrients in a valuable way as the ocean is. So we run a much lower ratio of phosphorus to nitrogen and it works out better for us because we end up with less algae growth, less dinoflagellate problems, and less issues overall running at around that 100 to 1 range. Now just for information, my personal goals with this tank right now with the coral frags that I have in it, which you really can't even see on camera, but I'll put some pictures up right now. I like to keep my nitrates about 5 to 10 and my phosphates about 0.02 to about 0.06. This tank is not full of corals, so it just doesn't need that high nutrient load, but it does need them to be in balance no matter where it is. The second analogy that I'm going to bring to you is about calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium, and we're going to correlate this to building construction. The calcium are going to be the bricks. They're going to be the structure, the thing that it's going to be built out of. And in the same way with your corals, they are the building blocks of the skeletons of your corals. Now the alkalinity is going to be similar to the mortar. It's going to provide the glue that sticks all of those building blocks together, adds strength and support and structure to those building blocks to make sure that you can have a strong building. And the magnesium in this analogy is going to be like the building site supervisor. It's going to control where the bricks go, how much of the mortar is used, and make sure that they don't end up in a useless pile over by the trash can. And once again, in this scenario, balance is absolutely critical. Now these are the basic ranges for these three things to be in in your tank. And if one of these is way outside from where it should be, the calcification process is going to take a big hit and you're going to see reduced coral growth and just end up with a lot more problems. Now people generally like to say that alkalinity is the most important one and I absolutely agree alkalinity is very important from a stability standpoint but in this ratio that we have here between these three elements magnesium is the key that's going to bind all this together and make sure that it's working like it should. So this is how I want you to think about this. Think about calcium as two balls, right? Calcium wants to stick together and make itself into a bigger molecule. But we don't want that in a reef tank because what can happen is if they stick together too much, then we end up with calcium precipitation. And it can literally look like snow inside your aquarium. The calcium binds together, it falls out of solution, and now it's not bioavailable to anything in the tank for use. It's literally a pile of bricks on your rocks and sand. There's no structure, there's no support, and it just falls apart. In the same way, if you don't have enough alkalinity in your aquarium, if your calcium is where it should be and your magnesium is where it should be, but the alkalinity is very low, you don't have sufficient glue to stick together a strong structure and things are just not going to go well for your corals. Your growth is going to be stunted, their skeletons are going to be weak, and it's just not a very good time. Now there is a situation where magnesium could be way too high, leading to a problem with calcium and alkalinity uptake because the magnesium is just going to coat everything and make them basically useless. But to get to that point, you would have to be adding magnesium to your aquarium. And most of us, once we get to the dosing stage of things, we know what's going on. But this is why it's very important for beginning aquarists when you start getting into the flow of things, research what you need to dose to the aquarium and why. Do not just add something to the aquarium without having a reason and test results to back up what you're doing that with. Because magnesium and all the other things is not something you want to overdose into the aquarium and have too much of. Now, that can get into a lengthy debate about what's a good magnesium level, but that's not why we're here today. We're just trying to discover what the relationship is and why they need to be in balance. So that's going to be in another video. And hey, if you're finding this information useful and it's helping you understand the relationship of these things, hit the subscribe button. So the basic point that I was trying to make in all of that rambling that I was just doing is that these things need to be in the proper ranges. 
If your calcium is a little bit on the higher side, then you want your magnesium and your alkalinity to also be a little bit on the higher side. You don't want a situation where your calcium is at the top of the range and your magnesium is at the bottom of the range because then you're going to start having issues and vice versa. You don't want it the other way either. Properly in balance is the key. And as long as these three things are falling within these three ranges, then generally speaking, you're probably going to be okay. But of course, there's always more to learn and we can't stop talking about alkalinity unless we talk about the third analogy, which is alkalinity to nutrient ratio. And we're going to compare this to like building a campfire. I want you to think of the alkalinity as like the fireplace stones. You got a campfire, you need to contain it somehow. So you put the stones around the outside of the campfire and that keeps everything safe and stable. This is the role of alkalinity in this relationship. But you can't have a campfire without having wood for fuel. And this is the nutrients in this relationship. And those two things have to be in balance for you to have a proper campfire. If you have a massive fire pit with giant stones around the outside, but you don't have enough wood to fill that fire pit up, you're never going to have a sufficiently sized fire for that pit. Controversially, if you have a little small pit in your backyard and it's just got a few stones around it, but you dump a dump truck load full of wood on top of it, that fire is going to rage out of control and you're going to have problems. It's not safe and it's not contained. In the same way in your aquarium, the alkalinity and the nutrient ratio needs to be in balance to have a good campfire or good coral growth and coloration. If you have a situation where your aquarium is running at very low nutrients down around one part per million nitrate, you don't want your alkalinity to be at the top of the alkalinity range. High alkalinity wants to promote rapid coral growth. But the problem in that scenario is if you have rapid coral growth trying to occur because of the high alkalinity and you have low nutrients, there's no fuel for the coral growth. There's nothing for them to use up for their growth. And it's just going to make for a situation where your corals are very unhappy and they don't grow and look very well. Controversially, if you flip that the other way and your alkalinity is really low and you have very high nutrients, the corals don't have the alkalinity needed to grow. They just have all of this fuel all around them. And where does that fuel go? Algae problems. So here is what I would say. If your tank is running below two parts per million of nitrate, and your phosphates are also in range down that low, keep your alkalinity down around seven or eight or maybe 8.5. But if your tank is running at five parts per million or so or more, then you're going to want to run your alkalinity upwards of eight and a half to about 11, depending on how high your nutrients are. You can kind of come up with a little bit of a scale in your head. If your tank is running at about five parts per million nitrate and your phosphates are in balance, then you can run your alkalinity at around eight. If you bump the nitrates to 10, then you can bump the alkalinity to nine. And if you go to 15, you can go to 10 and so on and so forth. You kind of get where I'm coming at here. But if things are out of balance, none of this applies. Most of the time when people set up a saltwater aquarium, it looks pretty much like mine. I recently moved this tank and I reset the whole tank. There's 30 frags in here, but you really can't see them. But there's not a whole lot of coral load. So I typically want to run my nutrients very low. But what you see sometimes with some information that's out there on the internet is people say you can run a reef tank at 20, 30, 40 parts per million nitrates. And while that's true, that would be completely unbalanced for the amount of load that's in the tank. So this is something that I didn't actually plan on talking about, but it's kind of where the video is going. You have to balance the whole tank as a system, not just one thing or two things to each other. The nitrates and phosphates need to be in ratio and that ratio needs to be in ratio with the alkalinity which needs to be in balance with the calcium and the magnesium. And all of that needs to be in balance with what the tank is actually doing. 
I would not want to run this tank at 30 parts per million nitrates. Even though it's okay for some people's tank to be running that high, generally you only see that being good in a tank that's packed full of corals, and mine isn't. So you can see how that would be bad advice for me with this tank if somebody told me you should be running that tank at 20 parts per million nitrates and your alkalinity at 12. That would be bad advice for this specific aquarium. And your specific aquarium is going to need specific numbers that you're going to be targeting at the time in that aquarium's life. So what I want you to do is get your parameters tested and drop them down in the comments. If you're having a problem with your tank, maybe we can figure it out. Or at the very least, I can make some recommendations. I wanted to come over to this tank to drive this home just a little bit more with an example. Now this is my three gallon Pico wine glass tank. It's got a Delua Illimagic Pixel light on the top. Very cool light, very easy to use. But this tank is running at one part per million nitrate. There are no calcifying corals in this tank that are going to have to grow any sort of a skeleton. And the only thing that needs any nutrients really is the macroalgae. So it would not be smart for me to try to run this tank at say 10 or 11 alkalinity. There's no reason. This tank is running at seven alkalinity, the very lowest of the recommendations for that range. The phosphates in this tank are virtually undetectable because I'm running one nitrate, 100 times less than that, 0.01 on the phosphates, which sometimes just doesn't even register on the test kit because our kits aren't accurate enough for that. But this drives the point home that balance of the specific tank you're working with is so important. So if you're asking for help on the internet, make sure that you tell people, this is what I have in my tank. I have XYZ types of corals. What should I be shooting for in my parameters? And that's going to help you so much more than just posting a picture of a sick coral and telling people, help, I don't know what's wrong. And the only thing left for you to do now is to watch this video on the screen. I think you're going to find that pretty interesting.